Hi all of you. Today I will try to explain how to configure the TP-Link router. Basically the interface is all over the same, so you could use this for any TP-Link router. Now here we will include also the 5 GHz router uh, and also with the possibility to do the guest network. So when you plug your router, you will see of course here uh, connected. You will connect normally, it has also the password underneath the the router and uh, as you can see on the picture you it is also you can see also the 5 gigahertz network with the same name after you connect uh, you can either take the gateway address or you can just type tip a link login net so this is the uh, login I because I previously logged in it should uh, ask you for username and password which the default one is admin admin if you want to uh, start immediately, it will be good uh, option so that you could, I don't know, uh, start with a quick setup, which is very easy to set. All you have to do is next, you can say that you want to use 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, that is the dual band technology. You put your country, you put your uh, name of the wireless, my Wi-Fi SSID. You put your password and by the way VPA to PS key is recommended and if you want more advanced wireless settings you can also set here like the channel width and channel but now this this is a very good feature of the TP link it's uh, recommended so you put the auto where uh, the router itself it will choose the best channel available for the uh, transmission after you do the next you will be ready and this is the menu so when you click save the router will be uh, ready to serve with uh, dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz now for more advanced users let's see what we have uh, this is the IP of my uh, one here you can set the IP uh, depending on your internet provider like static PPO LTO LT 2TP and the others as you can see or you can even click detect and it will detect uh, automatically like it did in my uh, case and the one is connected you have also some advanced here uh, but you can put the name of the uh, router so that you can connect directly with the host name and not with the IP another thing that I prefer to change is also the LAN address so for example I usually put 10.1 and uh, all my uh, clients will take this address now after I do this if you in this Mac clone uh, if your uh, internet provider uh, restricts you to use only one Mac address then you can clone also the Mac address of the computer that you did next thing to do is to select the band now as you can see you can deselect 5 gigahertz or you can say I don't want to use this I want to use only 5 gigahertz then you will set up only that one now let's go directly to 2.4 gigahertz as you can see as in the quick setup here all you put the name of the uh, your wireless you put the uh, region the mode and channels what is VPS usually I uh, disable the VPS because of the security reasons and this pin is standard you can find it also underneath the router now wireless security it is preferred to use the uh, VPA VPA2 authentication like it is here in default and then here you just type your password any password I think this it is enough for the home users Let's go to see what's in the Mac filtering. In Mac filtering, uh, here you can uh, disable the users, which let's say you have a neighbor who tries to attack your uh, wireless and connect your attacks. If you see him uh, trying to do that, then you can disable and he can never connect to the wireless. In wireless advanced, this here, what is mo most important is the transmission power. If you don't want your wireless to be uh, in higher range then you can put in low um, in low 
power mode. In this case, instead of uh, maximum uh, 100 meters, it will go, let's say, around 30 to 40 meters. And uh, also, I forgot to say here in basics, in basic settings, you can also use the router. If you want to use the router as a bridge, then you enable the WDS. Now, after you enable this, you have a new menu where you can select which network you will bridge to. After the scanning, you will see all the available networks. And let's say that you connect to one. Of course, you need to know the password of that router. And after doing that, you will be uh, bridging the the wireless network same things is same thing is uh, in uh, 5 gigahertz uh, settings here as you can see you have more channel width like 20 40 and 80 as as uh, for 2.4 gigahertz you see you have only 20 and 40 megahertz as for far for the channels you can see that the channels are more broadband now this is very good because most of the uh, users uh, most of the neighborhood they have the maximum normal uh, 2.4 gigahertz routers and the old channels from 0 to 12 they are all busy so they usually interfere but with this broad border channel width uh, i think that uh, the wireless will be will be uh, better and uh, give more uh, bigger through output. The other stuff are all same and also here as you can see we have all the guest network. Now when you enable the guest network the users will be connected and they will be served only with internet and they won't have any other uh, access to your network like your files, photos or even your smart TV. So they cannot push the YouTube movies to your TV. Another good thing that this router offered is the wireless schedule. Here you just give enable it. After you enable, you say that every user that connects, it has, I don't know, two hours of free internet. And you can even give it, if during the night you use it, you don't want to uh, people to interfere with your uh, bandwidth, then you just select who do you want when for example on sunday you give this and you say you you, you allow them to use the internet uh, let's go to dhcp now uh, dhcp settings is actually the ip that you will give to your clients so if enabled you will just give them um, uh, the same network as the router that we put here in our case we put uh, if you put here 10.1 then also in DHCP you need to put 10 point let's say from 100 to 120 IPs list time list time is the number of minutes that uh, the router will check if that user exists this is good in cases where uh, you have a uh, guest and they come and they so that the IP will not be reserved. It will check if it is active, it will give it again. If it is not active, then it will write it as yes, this IP is free and it will give to the to the new users. Same here. You need to change also here. Sorry, one and then set. Of course, there are some monitoring tools here, like you can see who is connected where. Uh, address reservation same you take the MAC address from here and say okay my smart TV will be always connected to this IP and you put in address reservation MAC address the IP address you just say enable them save another feature that top link routers are are the USB settings now the USB settings uh, can do USB settings are uh, good if you want to share your uh, videos photos in i don't know maybe to your uh, tv or maybe to share it uh, within the within the house or office now whenever you enable the usb mass storage you will see that this uh, will be connected and then after you you set the user accounts where you can give the uh, usernames who can access the 
USB, then you will have the storage sharing, which after it is enabled, you will have access through your uh, network by simply typing the IP of the uh, IP of the router. Another thing we have also media server. This is good uh, for uh, DL DLNA enabled uh, TVs or computers, or even your iPads or uh, Android tablets. And of course, at the end, uh, by the way, by enabling this, all your devices uh, will access your uh, USB. And if in USB there is music, uh, photo or video, the TV, the iPad will show and they can play it on their on locally on, on the device. Another thing is the print server, which uh, at the time before TP-Link didn't make it uh, function so good. But this time I checked it, but I don't have time to show you now. It works perfectly. For netting, let's not talk. Let's talk about the forwarding. Now, the forwarding, as you know, uh, is very important because if you want to ask, if you have a server that you want to access from outside, and if they, uh, let's say, it's hosted in port 8080, and then from here you just say that port 8080 from outside, send it to this address where your server is let's say it is I don't know 200 and internal port usually is the same but if it's not the same then you can put here or there are a common service port in the, our case for example if I want to do the HTTP you can see that HTTP port is directly enabled to this this could be a web server for example same thing goes also with the uh, remote desktop. If you just put uh, here the remote desktop port, which computer, the IP address of the computer that you want to control, then you enable TCP. Here you don't need to select anything. You just say save and it will be done. Another uh, thing, if you want to enable the parental control, you go to your, let's say, to your kid's PC and you log into TP-Link uh, console and from here you say, okay, enable parental control. Now, what can do this is, what this can do is this, you, you take the, cop you copy the MAC address of the PC, put it here and then you save. After saving, you actually can say that your kid can use internet or access to this network every day from this time to this time. Now, after you do this, you can even restrict the URLs. Let's say I don't want to him to see the URL YouTube. You add it and that's it. That computer with that MAC address, when he tries to enter the YouTube, it will be, be, it will be impossible. Of course, this is very good way, uh, thing because even if it is very basic, you can at least control and uh, some of the websites that uh, they are not for the kids, like it can be pornography, uh, gambling. Another thing that it is very uh, useful is the bandwidth control. With bandwidth control, uh, you, uh, you enable some of the computers that say that you have a NAS device. And the NAS device is used also to download the torrents. So you enable, you say like you have, uh, I don't know, two of these, 10. By the way, uh, the egress band bandwidth, I don't know why they use this uh, word. This is the upload speed. So upload and this is download. After you save this, you can add and say, okay, this computer IP range or just IP and you can say the priority of this means uh, 8 so if some other user is using the internet the router will give to that users more priority than to this IP range and if for example you have in your uh, normal users in uh, one IP from 100 to 120 then this will have more priority by putting it one and the others connected in other IP range. That's as I give previously the example of the of the NAS, which downloads the torrents or whatever. 
then they will uh, you can here uh, do the restriction of the bandwidth in this way uh, during the night it will download with higher speeds and during the day when you use the router it will download depending on the priority another thing uh, what should i explain is the system tools here you set uh, the time zone where you are and another thing is the firmware upgrade after you download by the way you should check the tip building site uh, for the new upgrades you can see that here you have the information about the, the which version you have and uh, by comparing this with the tp link site you will uh, download the firmware and it is very easy you just choose file go there and immediately you will have the the thing another thing is backup and restore let's say that uh, you want to back up all your settings after you did this you can easily back up by clicking back up it will start to download the image file you will store that image file and when, whenever you need to reset to factory default or whenever you do the upgrade of firmware if uh, needed you can easily restore the file and you will have all the same with the name with the password and all other settings that you you did it also from here you can reboot the the route i think this is it if you have any other question please uh, put in the comments i can explain with no problems hope that uh, this helped you and see you in other videos bye